Oh, I'm out here just hanging out with one earring. That's not okay. Anyway. <sighs> I apologize, y'all. I took a nap and I tried to finish the last like 20 minutes of this book. And then I passed out and then I woke up, I woke up, sorry, and try to read it again. It was a hot mess, but I'm going to wait till some more people come in because, wait, yeah, because I got, I got stuff to discuss today, okay? For all of us who've read Black No More, it's going down. So we can just wait until some more people come in. I'm gonna try to share the link on my Twitter. Or, uh, wait a minute. I'm wondering if I can just. Um. I'm like trying to take a picture. Okay. You see that I keep going in not a definition, but I guess it's okay. So I'm going to be quiet for like a second while I post this online. You know, so give me a second here. I'm also like trying to remind myself how to post stuff online. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh Okay, let me see. Try and okay. You know, trying to make an Instagram post is some stuff. Let me just tell you. Okay. So I think I did it. Wow, there's so many people live. Yeah, no, that was trust. <laughs> My friend is on. She's live. Wow. So many people are live on the gram? Blasphemy. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I might just start talking because I was like trying to wait. I don't see anybody. Oh, it's probably because I had a big, a big screen. Hey, Regina Renee. Hey, Shay. Hello. So this book was wild. If you could describe the book in its entirety in what's in one sentence what would it be for me ahead of his time yeah i'll just type that in and put it up here it was ahead of its time i kept reading this book and i was just like wow I'm also, whew, I am really out of it. I'm apologizing for the yarning. I don't even know how it happened, but I plan to within the next week or two. Yes, it is 
wild. So Regina, Renee, and I are going to take you through it, Shay. So I have, hopefully, I don't bore y'all too much, but I have 18 points that I wanted to address. Um, let's talk about one of the concepts that um, was constantly said throughout the book explicitly and then uh, covertly hinted to um, from like, I don't know, two thirds until three, and until the end of the book, sorry, which was always a Negro. Regina Renee, do you got some words on that? So throughout the book, um, there were some authors, no, not author, there were some characters who engaged in this experience um, and experiment by this doctor called Dr. Crookston or something. Hold on. Um, I would have had more than 18 because all the red is questions. But I was like, no, let me try to sum this up. So it's Dr. Crookston, I believe. He was the one, Crookman, sorry. Dr. Crookman came up with this experiment procedure that changes you into a white person. So if you were born black or African-American um, or just black from another country in the continent and living in the U.S., you can, you know, sign up for this experience or experiment and then you become a white person, like totally different than what you are, right? So even though one of the characters, Matthew, who stick with us throughout the whole book, um, when he got his surgery or the procedure, um, people were calling him a Negro Caucasian. And he kept like talking about like, oh my God, they put my face out there. They put my name out there. Like there, I can never escape being a Negro. So throughout the book, you just kept giving, getting these themes of like, you're always a Negro. Like there are so many black people who signed up for this experience and this experiment and like white people never accepted them. So no matter what they did, these white people were just like, look, you're still a Negro. So yeah, that that was interesting. Yeah, a lesson in never forgetting your place. Never forgetting your place. Okay, second point. Um, I have 18 points as um, Regina Renee <laughs> as uh, on our second point. Um, what do you think about how the, um, book describes the color line specifically to the repeated use of the word darkies which i have to you know say have not heard that in such a long time and those who haven't read the book like how would you feel being addressed as darkies and if you are a dark um, skinned black person have you ever felt like you wanted to be lighter and you don't have to answer that I I've felt that before um, so like them talking about those things felt very relatable to me um, and don't forget that the baby transformation only took one day for babies like, why do that to a baby? I thought that too. I was like, are people really think like considering this for, for the baby? Like that's, the baby just came into the world and you were just like, yep, procedure. Um, the difference between us is more than just skin color. That commentary alone. Yep. Yep. Um, I had a somatic response. Me too. I like, just constantly, I was like, darkies, huh? Like, I, I I, just couldn't, to me, it felt worse than Negro. It felt so worse than that. So I was like, wow, 
Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. The third point is race was created to be dis divisive, right? So like there are parts in the book where white people are like, we created this so that we can be superior. And in the book, it is like, it lays out saying this is a part of white supremacy. Like, what were, what were your thoughts on that? Because a lot of people think race is not a social construct. They don't believe it to be that. So while I was reading this book, I'm like, wow, this book is ahead of its time. And um, I just, I just want to know where y'all stand on what I just said. Because this book was... It. Hold on. I wrote it down. 1931 is when this book was public, pub, published. I'm like, publicated, which is still a word, but not in this text. When I was a kid, I used to scrub and scrub at my skin because I used to get teased for being dark skin. I love it now, but it took 16 plus years. Shit, I just really wish y'all are gonna be there for my video that I'm um, releasing tomorrow at noon Central Standard Time as I talk deep about The um, Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Because that right there is one of the points I made um, in talking about the character Pacola, Pisacola. Um, so yes. I can most definitely relate to that. Um, hold on, let me see. So in the beginning of the book, there is a, hmm, and I, I added this after, because most of it is just in order as it appear in the book, but this one, this point number four is not. So there's a, a character named Max, who we already discussed. And Max being pretty much shunned by this white woman. So, um, hold on, let me see. Okay, my camera fixed. I was like, I'm gonna fix my camera. So this white woman was like, hey. No, he came up to this white woman and he was like, hey, can I dance with you? And she was like, I don't dance with Negroes. Just like straight up said that to him. And he then got the procedure and then hunted her down because she was the love of his life and he like needed to be with her. And then this fool entered, he like um, got a part of this organization because I'm trying not to spill it off for Shay, got a part of this organization and then like became higher up because he looked like a white man and just continued to just be around this woman and everyone who she's associated with who was just as racist and horrible as she was. And just that whole dynamic just really made me think of like, there are black men who will do whatever to not be associated with darker skin like women and uh, darker skin black women. Cause even in the book, like they were talking about how, you know, um, they prefer light skin uh, black women. They prefer white women um, and was t really degrading darker skin black women. And I was like, this internalized racism and colorism and elitism and entitlement is, it is thick between black men. And I'm thinking like, when was this book, you know, written? And I'm like, 1931. And I'm like, whoa. These things are still happening today, you know? Um, race is definitely a social construct, but it still has ramifications. Speak your truth. Money is a social contract. Speak your truth, too, but don't try to navigate this world without. <sighs> See, we ain't even get that deep. We 15 minutes in. Amen. Yes. Um, Shay, my dark skinned family members added bleach to their back. Yes, this right here. I've heard of this. Definitely heard of this. Or being like, oh, don't get in the sun. You're going to get darker. And it's like, your girl is highly melanated. 
organ oil, joy, uh, organ oil orchestrated. We know who said those words, the famous Janelle Monet. She said highly melanated, amen. Organ oil orchestrated. I have never felt so seen, amen. Whew. Um, I think the meaning or perspectives of race is, is the construct. The actual differences exist. I think assigning value to those differences is the construct of white. Y'all are really out here. I feel like y'all should have been in this. I feel like I need to send y'all a link. Get on in here to the stream. Amen. I can't do it on my own. Are you free? Because I need the link to be sent. The way Max talked about black women. Oh, hold on. The self-hatred was jumping off the page with that character with his love. Right. Like even to the end, Max was like, yeah, you know, I really love her. I really love her, although she hates everything about me. Like, just because you got this surgery doesn't mean it erased the whiteness, like erased the blackness from you. The doctor couldn't even figure out how to change race from a molecular or, or a DNA or cell, um, yeah, a cell uh, perspective. He couldn't. So I was just like, "What? what is this love? And then I was like, can this be toxic love? You know, like, what? what is this? Make this make sense because in my mind, the math ain't mathin'. The math ain't mathin'. Um, the way Max talked about black women was obscene and to think he called himself in love after me. one meeting with Miss Day and she insulted him. Insulted him. I said, okay, cool. Um, we did that. We did too, but it was how my grandmas wanted us to be clean. My family never made me feel bad about being dark skin. And honestly, seeing them is what grew my love for my own skin. Yes. Yes. I haven't read it, but I'll join if you want. I'm going to put the link um, to this live. Just if anyone wants to join, and I'm gonna put it in the chat, okay? So if you wanna join, you can, you can. I think I'm gonna do that for the rest of them because it'd be like kind of odd me talking to myself. So yes, um, love, are you kidding me? He doesn't even know her. And what he does know is that she hates everything about, every goddamn thing about him. Oh, this book had me hot. This book is definitely ahead of its time. I think if this machine existed today, a lot of our people would use it. Even some that say they are true to their melanated selves. Exactly. Exactly. I think it has to do with, are we taking time to really sit there and process the internalized racism that was literally beat into our ancestors, beat into our grandparents, beat into our parents, and then later, you know, beat into us whether physically or um, uh, emotionally. So I'm just saying, it's a lot, it's a lot. Okay, so what did I do? Point one, two, three, and four. So, if you have the book, let's all go to page 35, page 35, okay, um, and this is what I think we need to talk about, and Dr. Crookman pride himself above all on being a great lover of his race. He had studied its history, read its struggles, and kept up with its achievements. He subscribed to six or seven Negro weekly newspapers or two of the magazines. 
He was so interested in the continued progress of the American Negroes that he wanted to remove all obstacles in their past by depriving them of their racial characteristics. This felt like, but I got black friends. As saying, because he had these magazines and because his home was filled with African mass and paintings of Negroes by Negroes and that he was, um, known as the race man and the Negro, I mean, in the race, he was known as the race man in the Negro society, society, sorry. And that he studied the history and all these things that then that justified him offering this experiment to black folks who still were seen as Negro Caucasians anyway. Like the fact that this, experience experiment existed in my opinion is a great act of self-hatred and internalized racism and and, and i'm going to stand on that right and he was completely um explaining away her hatred of black people the whole time but i also was like this is not new like when we first got introduced to Max, what did Max do, y'all? Max showed up as himself. Max showed up as himself and continued to be himself. This man literally infiltrated a version of the KKK just so he can profit off the discrimination and racism of Black folks. Just take a moment of what I just, this man said, I'm going to exploit my brethren in order so I can get this coin and date this white girl who really hates me because I'm black, but she don't know I'm black yet. Ciao. Ciao. We got Shay in the building. Hey. Hey, how are you? Is it me? I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me now? Oh, thank God. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Come into the brethren. Hold on, let me let me fix this. Okay. Cause I hate it when it's just two. I'll be like, dang, y'all can see all my boogers. That's not okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'll be like, no. Okay. Um, we're moving on on my list of 18 points. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we already talked about darkies, which I didn't realize that I repeated. So that was, a, that, so now we got 17 points. Okay. So in this book, they talk specifically about housing and how housing is impacted based on the color of your skin, right? So while I was reading that, I was like, wow, this book is ahead of its time. And it made me think of that book by, I forget his first name, Rothstein, called The Color of Law. And I was just like, wow, this is really showing you how things and policies and stuff is set up. Because in the book, they're telling you we are creating this racist policy so that Negroes can't live here. So I'm just like, damn. So I'm wondering what people think of that. Um, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, you know, but then to see somebody like write it and put it in a book and like publish it and be like, yeah. this is it. People could read this and like be like, yo, like, don't this sound like what? They yeah. Like, I think that's the shock of it. Yeah. Because it's like, we know this. Because we all know redlining, like we know redlining exists, right? right? Like we know that it's a thing, but then to like read it and it be a thing, like that's how I felt when I read Black Like Me and like yeah. the, the man tells a story and whatnot. And I was like, this was a book and like a scientific experiment that like existed in the 50s and y'all act like y'all, it never happened. Like, never yeah, happened. I think, I think it's telling. 
it's very very telling because it's like um it's funny because like there's always this like this thing that i used to hear as a kid that like people would say it'd be like if you ever wanted to um if you ever wanted to get over on black people whatever you write hide you it in a book because they don't read right I think right it was like always what like it was like doing that yeah, I think it was. And like, I would always be like, and it was like, but we we do read very much so and very, very well. well. Like, it exists. <laughs> she said, and it very exists. well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so when I was reading that, I was like, damn. And I kept thinking, wow, this book is ahead of its time. And the way it talked about white supremacy really just shook me. I'm like, we're having these discussions in, in 1931. But I also thought, because to me, the whole book read as a satire. And I don't know if that's true or not, but the whole book read to me as a satire. And I felt like it had to be written with a hint of um, comedy or it wouldn't have been published. Like there still had to be oh, I, a honestly, aspect of it. I, I've been thinking that that is something that publishing does when it comes to publishing like our truths. Is yeah. that there has to be a satirical slant on it. Cause like I read Black Book and I was like, there's yeah. nothing funny about this book. Like I didn't yeah. laugh not once. And I was yeah. like, is that how you sell it? Like you get yeah. the majority to believe, oh, it's just all fun. It's just like, yeah. this would never happen in real life. And I was like, there's no situation in this book that I don't guarantee has happened to at least one black person in their life. Yeah. Like at yeah. least one. And so yeah. I think that for us, like the harder our truths are, the more funny they have to be for people to accept them. Yeah. I don't even have nothing else. Uh, you you nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. Um, the experiment was giving respectability. I'm tired of y'all in these comments, I swear. Um, if we lighten our skin and pulled up our pants, don't wear bonnets, then they will respect us. And I love my bonnet. I hate the narrative that's coming out about bonnets, side note. Just avoiding the root of the issue that is racism. Exactly. Hey, Heather. Um, put in a book. That's what I'm saying. Put in a book. Our pain is entertainment. Back to me talking about like, we. there still need to be a caricature. Is that the word? I feel like I'm always saying it wrong. Like yeah, elements. Yeah. You talking about like the cartoons that are all extra and like right. the forehead will be big or something. It'll be real. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Like, it has, like it has to be that in order for, you know, it to just be what it is. Um, right. Yeah. Man, we're really getting through these points. I didn't even realize I was going to have to um, what real said about respectability politics, I feel like that's like one of my like biggest pet peeves in life because like I don't want whatever I do to be the reason you accuse your racism. Like, well, if every black person acted like you, well, if every white person acted like you, if, if it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. So let, let's talk yeah. about something else. Everybody's <laughs> not gonna be like me. We're not all supposed to be the same. And right. I was talking to my boyfriend about this and I was like, the issue is, is we don't like things to be different for some reason. For some reason, we have made different bad and same good, and we're not all the same. And to like right. keep making everybody the same, everybody an injustice. It deserves yeah. everybody. And so and yeah, when we said that I was like, I feel that. Huh? I said, and it's boring as hell. Right, for real. Like we don't. I, I don't want to be around a bunch of cachets. I promise, I don't. Yeah. Like I like me like this much. Like I don't want to be around me all day long, all the time. Like five of me is way too much. Way yeah. too much. Man, I really miss being around my family, hearing your voice. I mean, you sound just like them. Love it. I'm like, I need to make myself over to Wisconsin, to Milwaukee, where the blacks be hanging out, Ayline. I need to go over there, because you sound just like them. That's, That's why I want to listen. My brother, 
my brother is in Wisconsin right now. My brother lives in Milwaukee. Oh yeah, I got lots yeah, of my family over there. there. Lots. <laughs> We're talking about like hundreds of them. So, oh, wow. so when you, you'll be like, oh my God, it's nostalgic. <laughs> you're like, I just want to listen to her talk. Thank um, you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, Oh, the whole put in a book thing drives me crazy. People acting like black folks don't lose their fingers and hands when, uh, <laughs> exactly, right? Right, right. Like, I was like, like one of the things that like my grandma used to always say is she was like, black people would always get called things after the fact that you're lazy after slavery is over. Like you're yeah. lazy when you stop working for us for free. You're criminals now that we can't force you to be slaves unless you're a criminal. Like, it's so many things that like, happen because of the way that they see us. Hold on. Man. R.I.P. Granny. Really, you coming with the, the receipts. Right. Right. Um, why would not protecting your hair be helpful? Why would that be better? Exactly. I think you're referring to my bonnet is what I was talking about earlier. Like, why would you not want to protect them edges? So like, oh, anyway, um, that's supposed to say better. Ignore me and my typing issue. It'd be like that. I have typing issues most of the time. So I'd be like, look, take me but now i've been like verbally telling people who try to correct my english i tell them i don't have time learning the slave master's language and then that, that shuts them up and then they, they don't they don't say a word after i'll be like nope not not learning the colonizer's language leave me alone i don't need to spend time on that <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk it's to always me. funny when like they do that because the way we speak definitely has grammar rules so whenever they say that it's always like no i'm following grammar rules just not the ones you want me to follow like that's why when y'all try to use our words y'all always mess up put right, finna at the wrong end do of a sentence. how does finna go at the end of a sentence please explain it y'all please, please it really don't make sense there's this um, TED talk that I love, and it's called um, I Speak Trilingual, and it's this, um, I think she's Caribbean, a Caribbean black woman, and she talks about oh, yeah. speaking That's a whole like, other language. Right. She talks about the three languages that she speaks. One is HUD, one I think is like a version of Creole, and then English, right? So she like talks about it, but in my mind, Hood is African American vernacular English. So he's like talking about it. And she was like, when white people try to talk, it's like y'all cooking in the bathroom. Like, cause she's like doing this poetry. And she's like, y'all, it's like y'all cooking in the bathroom. Like, I don't, like, no one understands what you're talking about. Like, shut up, essentially. So I was just like, that's why when people be trying to come at me, like, oh, you should have said this, or oh, or try to literally correct me as I'm speaking. I oh, and it's usually 99% of the time white people. And my response is, I'm not, and I don't have time to learn the slave master's language or the colonizer's language. And that shuts them up. And then I just continue I with life. So if anybody needs it, say I it. it. I should have said it in grad school when this white girl told me I would never get anywhere because the way I speak. And I was like, it's another story. But if I was like my there's younger self. Girl on, there's this girl um, on Instagram and TikTok and uh, yeah. she has a video and she like she's talking about um it's called code switching and she's like speaking like you know how they speak and then like in a split second she goes to AAVE and she's like how are you gonna tell me who you look like telling me how I'm finna talk and I just loved it like it was like yeah. what you don't understand is we have a versatility that you will never be able to have because life has required us to have it like it's mm -hmm. not that we don't it's that we prefer to speak what's comfortable for us like it's yeah, because I hate that whole, you speak so well for a black girl. No, I speak well for a human being. Okay, speak your truth. All right, Shay, Revelations 3 and 4 have spoke. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> it just 
really went ah. down in the chat. Amen. Really went down in the chat. I felt that. I felt that on a spiritual level. Woo. Um, we're gonna move on to point nine. We're flying through. Look at y'all. Um, so in part of the book, it talks about punishment, right? And like punishment of being a black person. It's black characters saying like they've been punished for 21 years being a darker skin. Why not get this experience or this experiment, right? So like, let's, let's think about that. Just that statement. In addition to a white man saying all, no, not a white man, a, a black man saying all American Negroes desire to be white. That's on page 32. Thoughts. Thoughts on that? I don't think all American Negroes desire to be white. I think all American Negroes desire the privileges that come with being white. Like, I think that if you gave black people the option of being black, but getting to get all the privileges that come with white, nobody would change their skin color. Like, what would be the point? This is on Shay's channel, y'all. <laughs> it's hers now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry. Hey, man, don't apologize for speaking your truth, sis. Never. <laughs> Never apologize for stepping in the room and demanding attention. Woo! Love it. <laughs> yeah, I just think I think that like I think that that's the misconception is I don't think that it would be that because it's not about being white. It's about what they get that we have to fight extra hard to get. Extra hard, bruh. I'm still tired. You ever be tired and you don't know why? And I be thinking about like how pain is and how adversity is literally passed on through your DNA. And then sometimes when I'm just exhausted and I've literally done nothing, and I'd be like, ancestors, is that you? Am I taking a break for you? I'm exhausted. So it's just, whew, it's levels to it. It's levels to it. Well, because I think, I think we, as, uh, as Black people, I think so much of our existence is dealing with white supremacy on a daily basis that we don't even think about it anymore. That is just something that we do. So we might be like, oh, I didn't do anything that day. But like, you probably had to go and be around people and wear your mask and not and watch what you say or do different things like that. Like, those are things that we constantly have to do that we do without thinking about. Like, right. I've watched myself, like, change the way I talk just because I'm in a grocery store and I'm the only black person in a grocery store without even thinking about it. It's just right. something that just happens. And so right. it was those th things that that stuff is. Shay, we lost you a little bit. Or I lost you a little bit. I, we left off on the grocery store. Oh, damn, I can't hear you. You're frozen. Okay, you're back. Continue. How? Let me work on my internet real quick and see if that's the issue. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to piggyback on what Shay was saying, right? So yesterday I had this idea had this idea that I want to do a discussion on my YouTube channel and I'm going to invite Shay if she can. I want it to be Shay, me, um, Ashley from Bookish Realm and Deidre from Say Tree Reads. We might have to throw somebody else in there um, to discuss code switching in literature. I just really feel like that needs to be a discussion. That needs to be a discussion and how booktube perceives code switching and literature it's been very interesting hearing what people are saying specifically about black authors debut novels it's been very interesting i've been in the background like hmm what's going on so anyway um let's let's move on to our our 10th question um Actually, I don't, I like uh, shorthand it, so I don't even know what I said. So let's just go past 10. Maybe I'll remember at some point. Um, oh, 
I already talked about it. Dang, we already talked about those things. Uh, okay, so in the book, they talk, we talking about Matthew, uh, who I just really don't like. I don't like Matthew and his friend. Like, they're both terrible. So Matthew joins these people called the, um, the something, the head of the knights or something is what they're called if someone um, can remember. And throughout the book, because so many people, so many black people, I should be specific, so many black people are taking this experiment and turning into white people, the black economy is just like tanking, just like tanking to the ground. And I'm like wondering what's your thoughts on that? Because it's like, I'm thinking like, at first I was thinking like, oh, they're just wanting this experiment, but they're not going to leave their communities. But then I thought, why would they stay in their community? So it was, it just became this kind of a thing that postulated a lot of questions within myself of being like, okay, so now they leave their communities, they abandon their communities, they pieced out, like, it was just a bunch of things to it. So I'm wondering people's thoughts on that. Hey, Michelle. Hey. So knowing that you said the book was published in 1930, again, going back to what you were saying about it being before its time, it was giving us the blueprint of what happened when integration happened. When integration happened, the black community economy shrunk. Yep. Not the buying power of black people, but yep. the money circulating in their community. And right. I, I know people like we're supposed to be like integration is great. But yeah. We never asked for integration. We asked for equality, and what we got was integration. Whoo! Amen. Revelations three and four. We got it. <laughs> I also felt I'm just I'm just saying you were just speaking your truth. I also felt like it gave us the blueprint to uh, gentrification when they were also talking about um how the black economy tanked in addition to the housing market. Like it was just, mm -hmm. I just kept thinking, wow, I guess gentrification is back on this bullshit again, heavy and hard. Um, right. And then we already talked about number 14 when I was like, Matthew really married that white girl? <laughs> like this girl hated him, Shay, like hated him. Like if someone tells me their first time meeting them, I don't want to dance, I don't dance with Negroes. I'm like, all right, either you going to get these hands or you going to get this mouth, me cursing you out, or I'm just going to walk away. This one said, let me just go into the pit of hell and marry her and her Ku Klux Klan family. Like, is, is this really the, is blackness really this terrible? So that makes me think of this tweet that i saw yesterday it was like a picture and it was amara la negra and it was like when he says he don't date it was either dark skinned girls or black girls and she says really look at me again you sure and the person a tweet quote tweeted was like you were supposed to tell him to kiss your a exactly yeah, like that's what you were supposed to do and like i was like is this really what like and this is the 2021 tweet. Like, no. not only are you not just a regular everyday black girl, like you're famous. Like right. you are this. So if anybody should be able to tell somebody to kiss their tail, it's you. This, it should definitely be you. And the fact that there is some part of you that feels that you need to make this person see some value in you that they didn't see off top is frightening. And so just to hear that in this book in 1930 and know that I just saw that yesterday is like, yo, Where that's almost 100 years later. That's yep. almost 100 years later. Almost 100 years. And people love to say, oh, that was the past. If it was the past, why are we still talking about it? Man, I promise if you haven't read uh, The Souls of Black Folk oh, or- or what's Carter G. Woodson's one? Dang, 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 dang. I can't think oh. of it right now. 
I don't but, know. I can Google. Um, but either one of them, I promise reading them, you'll be like, they did not write this in, in the early 1900s. They didn't write this in like 1908. This was written yeah. last week. Like it's insane how people are like, there's so much change. But if you read older black writers who were doing the work and doing the study, like they both had Harvard degrees long before integration. Yep. Yep. Long before. Yep. And so like, like to know that they are saying the same things we say, we're saying now is again, frightening. Yeah. I just read something about, I feel like I need to read this. The uh, Miseducation of the Negro. Yes. That's what it is, the Miseducation of the Negro. That's on my TBR, I haven't got to it, but I just read something just to take a a little, you know, curve in what we're talking about. It said that he published the first survey of free black slave owners in the United States in 1830. I need a copy of that. <laughs> I, I need a copy of that. Wow. 1830? Ahead of the time. But I also like, is it ahead of the time? Or is it just showing us that we still got work to do? That is the question. It's definitely, I definitely, we still got work to do. Definitely. Because <laughs> it, it, where it is right then is exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah. I love how Regina Renee is like the Miss Thang. <laughs> and just to be clear, Miss Atlanta Thing did not call Max a Negro when she boldly stated she wouldn't dance with him. Yeah. I thought she said she called him a Negro. Now I, I gotta go. That was she said the other word, the harder word. Hey, chill out. Whoa, that could be true. It was a it was a lot of Negroes said. Oh, she didn't. Right on page eight, she said, "I never danced with ERs." That's exactly what she said. And that's on period. Damn. Yeah. Self hate. I could never marry somebody who let that word slip out their mouth. I feel like have my bail money ready. I'm right. going to prison. I'm going to prison. Like I'm going. It's cause for me, on site means on site. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was raised. On site means on site. So if you going to say with your human mouth something to me, and you're trying to get up in these drawers, on site means on site. And and, uh, black folks, we know what I'm talking about. On site. And that's it. Um, I want to talk about the character. Oh my God. Uh, what is it? Bridgery and, um, snob crap. So I'll give you a little like brief of these two characters. So one character, um, Bridgery is he invested in this study to like pretty much talk about like most of um, the white race is like pure white people. Like they just, the purest of them all, right? And then Snobcraft is a stat a statistician who found that to be false. So then when Brigadier came up to him and was like, what do you mean it's false? Like what's going on? And he was like, actually, there was a lot of mixing of races. He was like, when, you know, um, settlers came to the U.S. There was a lot of mixing of African slaves and um, indigenous folks. And he was talking about like slave owners. Um, he, he even said like raping their white, um, their black uh, uh, slaves. And he like talks about how the mixing happened and that he was able to go into people ancestry and find where a black person was at. So then he was like, we're all tainted. <laughs> like he was like, there's, there's like, we can't, 
We can't do like something is wrong. Like we can't publish this ever. We can't publish this ever. But then he thought that only he had access to the only copy and that respected white folks had copies to the other copy of his report. But I think it was some black folks came in, infiltrated the situation and published the results that most white people, if you go in their lineage, you will find a black person. So then it just totally destroyed their um, notions of like pure white people. So I'm wondering like, what's y'all thoughts on that? I mean, again, before it's time, isn't that similar to what they did with Myers-Briggs? Originally, it was supposed to show that white people more were more intelligent than black people. And when it didn't show that, it became a personality test. I'm just, I'm just, before it's you time. Know, I feel like I need to, I need to be, I just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, woo, I'm just man, gorgeous. If you ain't in, what'd you say? <laughs> I said that dress, that dress is gorgeous. Uh, Walmart, hey. Um, hey. <laughs> if you ain't in another live with me, I'm going to stalk you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's stalking happening, period. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. Whew. And this whole time, I also was thinking while reading this book, I'm like, what in the Tuskegee? Like... <laughs> Girl, that part. That's, that's it. That part. What is going on here? Um, he dreamed of her after, right? He lusted, it. lusted. It. How can you love? Listen, there was this dude, right. and this is just How me. Anybody you get excited or aroused, <laughs> you're like, yeah, mm -hmm, I'm on rock now. Yes, I love it. Huh? Right. Like, it no. sense. It just doesn't. Like, I remember when I was a student, there was this very attractive white man. And I was trying to shoot my shot. Also, my self-esteem wasn't that great. And I realized my self-esteem wasn't that great because I was existing in a predominantly white space at a, pre a predominantly white institution that kept giving me messages that I wasn't that girl. Okay when we all know your girl is that girl. So anyway, that university sucks. Moving forward, and not the university, the people around sucked. So um, let's fast forward 10 years later, I see this dude at a, uh, what is it called? Like homecoming thing. And he's really trying to shoot his shot. He trying. And I was like, let me remind you, white man, okay? What you told me back in 2010, no, you know, I wasn't, you know, educated there. And now with the Black Lives Matter movement. What? You know, fool me. What, what did, uh, what was his name? Oh my God. A fool oh, man can't get fooled again. <laughs> oh my God. If you don't take it out of my mouth. You ain't going to fool me again, amen? You ain't going to fool me again. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me a second time. You ain't going to get a second time to fool me again. It's not going to happen again. I was happen. like, oh, he really tried it. Thought he was going to get some of my brown sugar. Ah! The caucasity, really. Um, The only thing I'd be Ooh. dreaming about is catching her in these street Regina Renee, what is on site? What does it mean? The definition has never changed. Amen. On site is on site, and that's period. That's period. Um, in the beginning of my book, it seems like the author is hinting what you said. Oh, in his dedication, exactly. Exactly. So you think this is a troll? Oh, this is a troll. Did you see that comment? I saw the the pudding pots, but I was like, what is it? Oh, now I know what it's about. Never it took mind. me some time. It. it took me some time, too. It took me some time, too. I was like, what is it? Don't be stupid. Come on, y'all. Just right. go find something better to do. <laughs> Man, get you some business. 
Mind the business that pays yes. you. Ain't that what people do in these days? After Mind I heard you people. say that, I've been saying that so much. I was like, <laughs> this is the best phrase ever. Like you were the first person I heard say it. And I was like, I love this phrase. Just this mind awesome. it. Mind the business that pays you. Lord. People are doing the mo. Okay. Um, oh, did I? Oh no, that's 17 and 18. Sorry. So we talked about the statistician and everything. I think I now know what he's getting at. Yeah. Yeah, it took me. It took, me. It took us all. Um, <laughs> it took us all some time. So on in page 143, I really went for the my notes, I ain't lying. Um and the author start talks about the author says their givens who is quite a fanatic on the race question and white supremacy and yet he's only four generations removed from a mulatto ancestor one people really need to let that word mulatto die and just be done right i'm glad that girl Ooh. dropped it huh I said, I'm glad that girl dropped it as her stage name. Man, it just really had to go, right? right. Two, I, I just also want to say this, which is like related, but not related. So when I lived in Ukraine, there are Ukrainians who are half African and half Ukrainian. And I say African as one of the countries is usually in between anywhere between the um, West African and Central African countries. So, but living there, I found out that it is commonplace to address yourself as mulatto, which literally took me out. Like, I was like, as an American, right. I was like, huh? Like, I was very confused, but it happened. So I say that to say, Maybe in the American context, let's let mulatto pass away. I can't tell somebody how they want to identify, you know, and I and I don't think it's right for me. Like y'all better stop, you you know. So it's like, what whatever is going on. Um. So the seventeenth one, because it's eighteen, it's eighteen. Of them, I ain't lying. Um, what did y'all think about people? like intentionally exposing people of their African ancestry and like the, the white men who were at the top, like at the tippy top, high in power doing stuff. And then they tried to leave. So like the guy I was telling you about earlier, Bridgery and um, Snobcraft, they tried to hide when people found out that five generations ago, their relative was of African ancestry. And then the end of the book got very brutal for them. I don't want to ruin that for you, but it, prepare yourself for the end of the book. Holy. So I'm wondering, what do you think about, um, like, like uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to describe it, but in as, as little terms as I can say, white people exposing other white people for their African ancestry and really creating mobs to kill them. I mean, I feel like that like that was a thing. Like if they found out you were black and you passed, like they were stringing you up from a tree, you were getting tarred and feathered. Like passing was worse than just being black because you yeah. made them think that you were equal to them and they take that as like a huge slight. Um, I do think now though, um, and so like this live will be up so y'all can quote me on this. Um, <laughs> I, I believe personally that eventually reparations will be given to black people. I do believe when that happens, the percentage of black people in America will drastically increase people who don't look and have never looked and would never and have never presented all of a sudden will be going back to that fifth ancestor that is black and da, da, da. like I feel like once they find a way to be able to capitalize on it and be able to gain from it as well it'll go through it'll be a thing and I was like in the biggest my biggest belief on that 
is this insane notion that in like 20 years, everybody will be mixed. There's not that many interracial relationships by percentages for that yeah. to even be a thing. So like that concept isn't a real thing. Like I've always wondered, like, how did we get this number when most black people stay with black people and most white people stay with white people? Most people don't date outside their race. Mm-hmm. Like it's not that it is growing, but it's definitely not the majority. No, no. Speak your truth. So I do think that'll be a thing in the future. But like, as you were saying it, I was like, no, back then it was definitely a thing. They were definitely finding, like you were treated way worse if they found out that you passed. Right. And I always thought like, wow, like the idea of blackness or being tied to blackness was something that people were so afraid of being associated with and I always thought about like how do you juggle your safety like how do you make sense of your safety because reading the book Passing by um, Nella Larson and this black white passing woman literally existing in whiteness no one knows she's actually a black woman no one knows and I'm like, girl, this is dangerous. And this is like in the 20s because the passing is also a black classic. But it's just like in the 20s, she's just thriving, walking around. And I'm like, you ain't scared for your life? Like even other black white passing people are commenting on it. Like, girl, you just out here thriving. Like anybody can out you. Like we still know who you are. Right. Like. Kind of thing, and I'm like, right, and being out is dangerous, right? It's dangerous, and I think, and I think that goes to show just how bad the treatment is that people be so willing to risk what they know is pretty much guaranteed death if the truth is found out for the chance of what they could do before it is. And like that to me is like, it's part of the reason why like the newer contemporary, like adult books, like black book and the other black girl have been like such a big deal to me because it's been like, like I hate the situation these black people find themselves into, but I hate the world that created the situations to begin with. And they wouldn't be in these positions if this world didn't make them think this is what they had to do to get there. Yep. I felt that way about the character Oh my God, what was her name? It started with an S in The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Have you ever read that? That's on my list to read. And I was like, I've heard like mixed things about it. And so. I love that book, but it was hard, man. There's, so it's twins, they're both in passing. One of the twins was like, "I'm, I'm in black stuff. I'm doing black things, that's me. The other one was like, never been black, never knew black. I'm white on white on white. That's it. Like, that. that's it. That's all I'm existing in. But even when people literally confronted her in an alley, like, it was like, yo, you, you are my mother's sister. She was like, nope, never, never once. Like, her husband was so racist, saying all type of stuff to her. She was like, yep just living and i'm like wow 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 so that it just makes me think of those things or like how many people today are using their dna tests as evidence to claim that they aren't rich yeah and i'm a big conspiracy theorist i am a believer that if you were to go to all of those companies and do one each one of them would be different and you wouldn't have the same information across all of them like i think it is another one of those things that we're all the same and we all are different and we all like we're just humans and we're just and it's just like I, like th- the concept is nice it really is it really but is in actuality yes we're humans and humans don't work that way yeah so as you saying this i do have two results in two different things and I, I got them free from a friend who had a code and slid the code to me and then I was like cool let's live it right so on one of them it's like baby you are Cameroonian like majority Cameroonian that's your ancestry another one was like baby you Nigerian that's you 
But what is consistent is like how much Asian and indigenous I am on both of them. That was the only consistent thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't even know I had Asian. I said, who's Asian? Who knows? My dad claims some stuff. Should we believe him? So I'm just kidding. Not hoping my dad come at my dad, but yeah. So when I when I did both two of them, I was just very confused. Like I was like, how can right. this say this and that say that? Like, what's the truth? I'm just black, right? And let's continue living. <laughs> like yeah, I've that. had like some black people get mad at me because they're like, I'm not black. Like my great grandmother was Native American and did it. And I was like, sweetheart, like so was mine. Like full blood got the pictures. You look at my grandmother's face, you definitely see it. Like, yeah. But that's not what you see when you look at me. Right. I'm chocolate. You're not gonna know how many Native Americans are in my family and what right. all I grew up learning or anything like that. So like it's lovely that it's there. But you getting mad that someone doesn't see that or that you live in this context doesn't change the fact of what it is. Yeah. It's also like, I think when, when we talk about the relations between indigenous people and black people in this country, I think we forget to talk about the pitting against right. each other. That's we forget to talk about the slavery. We forget about slavery. Right. We forget about even the camaraderie, like because right. I'm from New Orleans and we like talk about those things. And then we also forget about the intentional erasure from white settlers right. on both sides. Oh, so for I, sure. Yeah. Right. Because like, they were big on making sure they ended up on roads and we didn't end up on roads. Like it's a like it's so much that happened. And that was what my thing about, you know, future reparations being a thing. Like there were so many more Caucasians that are Native American here in Oklahoma than Native yeah. Americans. Yeah. Willie Lynch. That man. Whew. Whew. Don't get us on the history. Or how like, oh, you already Man. said that. So, well, I, I suck. I was going right back to it. All right. So now we have moved ourselves to number 18. Ooh, we learned at the end. What are our thoughts of Miss Thang? Matthew's wife, after she done gave birth to this black baby. Sorry, I couldn't. I could right, not they spoil the that. Right? Huh? They changed the appearance, but the baby still comes out black because the DNA the is still black. The baby still right? came out blacker than black itself. I ain't lying. The baby was brown. I'm just saying, where y'all fit? Because I was shocked by this whole scene. Like, the baby came out brown. I expected that. But then how Matthew has literally infiltrated the KKK and been like just spewing hatred about black folks, dark skinned black folks, and just like really going in. And then when um, when the wife, when his wife, because his wife father is the head of this KKK people, the Knights people, right? And then when um, when, Snodgrass, when Snodgrass and someone else did um, their research, they also did research on people who are like uh, very visible white people who are in power. And they found out that the wife uh, dad had African ancestry and then people were literally in the baby on the Huh? I was like, wait, did he blame the black baby on her? Because yeah. they outed his he did. He, he did. <laughs> At first, he tried to, but then he took accountability. Like, he was like, you felt like he was going in that direction. But then I was like, wow, this man is no good. He is trash. And then he was like, oh, since you already have right. African ancestry, I'm actually a black man. I took the experiment and I'm actually Pat. Like, I'm actually. So he outed himself, 
But then the family was so afraid because everybody knew that they had a black person in their ancestry. So they flee, they flee, if they fled or flew or, you know what I mean? Like they peaced out. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, she's still wow. stuck with him knowing that her husband is a Negro. Interesting. Interesting. But I absolutely, because he was so money hungry and money driven. Like I was like, no, there's no way he's gonna be like, yep, I'm actually a black man. No. Yeah, I absolutely thought he was gonna blame her. And I was like, I'm chucking this book and we're gonna resurrect this character and he gonna get these hands. But that did not happen. Did anyone else who read the book have any final thoughts or something y'all want to add to the conversation. And yep, I'm going to keep my notes in the book for future reference. <laughs> I also have a bunch of like stuff in here too. Let me see. Oh, this was a line that took me out. The line said, um, days by day by day, we see the color line, which we have so laboriously established being rapidly destroyed. Laboriously established. Okay. And then the right after that was the offspring of these white Negroes will still be Negroes. Brings me back to my first, number one on my list, always a Negro, always a Negro. This was fantastic. I agree. I am so ready for Bill Street. Um, how about the way they turned it at the end that people with tan skin became the elite? Exactly. So at the end, I just feel like you got to read that, Shay. I just feel like we already spilling all the beans, but like, that right there had me confused. Like I had to, I had to reread that a couple times. I was like, what? You actually found out that people who took the experiment was actually in, you know, the black people who took the experiment on being white was actually whiter than the actual white people. So now people are being like, the tanner you are, the more whiter you are. Huh? Like, it was just, it was one of them things that really uh, just had you in, 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 um, in deep contemplation and thought. I was just enjoying the conversation. Thank you for being here, Erica. All right. Um, so, hold on. Let me get my phone out so I can say that. Uh... Also, thanks for coming, everybody. I think, Shay, you've been here since the first book, right? And Patrick, The Street? I don't know if yeah, you Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. I was here for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've done Anne Patrick, The Street. We've done um, Lorraine Hansberry. Uh, I forget the title. Lord Jesus, forget the, What was the title? It was a long. Oh, a raisin, a raisin in the Sun was the one I was here for. A Raisin in yeah. the Sun. I, I missed Anne Patrick. I can't remember on Lorraine Hansberry. Yeah. So we've done that. Now we've done Black Gnome. I was not expecting. I'm not going to lie, y'all. When I started this, let's read a Black classic a month. I thought, okay, this is going to be boring because I attribute classics to being boring. But white because classics are boring. classics are boring. They are they so are boring to me. Boring. I like, they just, them. I'm falling asleep. I'm yeah. knocked out. Like, ooh, hate it. But now that we've been really diving into black classics, no other classic could ever. <laughs> like, it's just, like, so good it's so good so yeah shout out to thrift books for giving me the my the copies for the low low if nobody if everybody was looking for the books in which we read they are um on thriftbooks.com 
Because I think I got this one for like three bucks. So. Yeah, because these definitely seem like I'm not going to be able to audiobook or uh, or e-read these. I need to get the physical copies for these. Right. I'm actually, I've actually hybrid read every one we've read so far. So I listened to the audiobook and also this. So it's a, it's a lot of tabs. Don't worry about that because I, I really had to. Now I feel like I need to buy more tabs because I really went in. God, did I go in um on this black classic is what made me join you consistently regina renee i love the blast classics the her and fantasy are hard for me i get that i get that i do read a lot of horror i do i thrive in that it's probably why i'm still addicted to forensic files <laughs> i gotta be honest about that Thank you both. I started reading this a few months ago and had to put it down, but I'm definitely finishing it now. Can't wait for Bill Street. Yes. So Bill Street, if you go on the in the description box of this uh, live show, it'll have the playlist of like some of the books. But I'm thinking on adding Passing by Neela Larson, even though I've already read it. So as long as I'm on booktube can like on booktube and like living i want this to be like a continuous thing so there is no end date it's just we reading a black classic a month it just needs to happen so at first i was going to just do it until the end of the year but now i'm obsessed with black classics so it just it just can't it has to happen uh, on a continual it. way what'd you say I said, I am with it. I am like yeah. super excited for this. Like, mm -hmm. I love this. I'm ready. So let's see what we, I do, I am ready for your November though, because we get another Ann Petrie and I just love Ann Petrie's writing. My God, gifted. Um, the Narrows, I think, right? Yep, The Narrows. So we're going to be reading If Bill Street Can Talk and Remember I'm trying to keep all the lives on the last day of the month at 7.30. If something happens, I'll let y'all know. But just for consistent purposes, last day of each month, uh, even if you don't see me advertising, it's the last day <laughs> of the month at 7.30. Um, so we'll be reading James Baldwin, who I like. I also... Um, I also still want to watch the movie A Raisin in the Sun, so we'll have to figure that out in our uh, in our um, what is it called in our Discord. And while we're in the Discord, let me go on YouTube right now, put it in the put it in the comment because I I don't think I sent it to you, right? I didn't send you to Discord. No, not yet. Uh -huh. Okay, I just put it in there. It's in the chat, the Discord. Okay the link and you, it's seven and it expires in seven days but i think we still need to figure out when we're going to watch a raisin in, a raisin in the sun on discord and then i also want to watch the color purple together i'm just saying i do i'm with you uh, all right well thank you shay everybody let's give a round of applause for shay really coming in is living her best. <laughs> Amen. Um, Shay, earlier I talked thank about you for inviting you. Me. Huh? I said thank you for inviting me. I appreciate Whoa, it. Like, being anytime. Like, anytime. I was telling people earlier um that there is there is a I'm I i want to get like a, a nice group of us in a dis in a in a um in a live discussing code switching and literature as it impacts book two reviewing. Oh, and I, really I would love that. to be a part of that conversation. Yeah, so I was like, I'm inviting Shay. <laughs> I would love to be a part of that conversation. Yeah, so I, I really want, and I feel like I might have to do a part two because like I want you, I want Britt, I want Ashley, I want Erica, I want Deidre, 
or I feel like we all can do it too together. Like it'll be fine. Yeah. So, but I'm going to try to figure out how to get that going with our schedules and stuff. So we can like do that. Um, all right. Well, anyway, see y'all later. And thank you all for tuning in. Bye. Mm -hmm.